Congratulations, you have survived 16 chapters of AP Chemistry. And there's one to go, so don't die on me now, right? Electrochemistry is the last chapter covered on the AP test. So now we're going to look at an interchange between chemical and electrical energy. In order to conduct electric current, you need moving electrons. Well, we have that in a redox reaction. We have moving electrons. That's what redox is all about. Somebody's losing electrons. Somebody's gaining electrons. It's great. Well, often these reactions are done in solution, and the electrons are transferred from direct collision of the particles. In electrochemistry, we're going to force the electrons to move through a wire. And then these moving electrons should conduct an electric current. So this offers us a good chance to review redox a little bit. That's a good thing before the AP test. Uh, so we did this one in first semester, I think even first quarter, back in October, not that you remember October. Uh, we had a solution of potassium permanganate and iron. And we did this redox titration. And again, you probably don't remember, but we also added a little sulfuric acid. Often these redox reactions are done in acidic solution. And you'll see why, or maybe you'll remember why, in a second. Okay, so now here's where people go wrong in balancing redox reactions. They think they can just balance it like any other reaction, where they say, I have one manganese atom, one manganese atom. I have one iron atom, one iron atom. Because then all of a sudden that fails because you say, well, I have four oxygen on the reactant side. There's no oxygen on the product side. So we're going to have to attack that a little differently. But also with a redox reaction, your charge needs to balance. So yes, we have to have the same number of atoms for all elements on both sides, but we also need to have the same charge on both sides. So don't attack this as you would a normal like double replacement or something. We need to balance redox reactions with the half reaction method. Remember, you can often kind of tell what particles go together. Like here's a manganese particle, here's a manganese particle. Here's an iron particle, here's an iron particle. I bet these things go together. So we're going to balance them as half reactions. So here's one of the halves. The iron plus two iron, or ion, forming iron plus three. Okay, so first you check and make sure that the atoms balance, which yes, they do. There's one atom of iron on both sides or I should say one ion of iron. Uh, there's nothing else. I don't have to worry about hydrogens or oxygens, but I do have to balance the charge. And your only option when it comes time to balancing the charge is to add electrons. So if I have a plus two and a plus three, and I can only add electrons, we'll add one electron to this side. And then the charge should balance. I'll have a plus two and a plus two. That half is done. Well, that wasn't so bad. Now we balance the manganese half. So I have my permanganate ion. And again, these are scaled down to net ionic. So that was probably something like potassium permanganate. Potassium was a spectator. And then we have manganese plus two. OK, so there's one manganese on each side. That's nice. The oxygen. There is no oxygen on the product side. Do you remember that you balance oxygen by adding water molecules? This is in an aqueous solution. There is water present. So we'll add four water molecules. So first you balance all the atoms besides hydrogen and oxygen. Then you go for the oxygen by adding water. Now we can balance the hydrogen by adding hydrogen ions. I have eight hydrogens. I need eight hydrogen plus one ions. That's why it's in an acidic solution, because you're going to need hydrogen to balance the extra hydrogen from the water. Oh, yeah. You remember this, right? OK, so all the atoms are balanced, and now we have to do the charge. All we can add is an electron or two, or three or four, or five. 
On my reactant side, my total charge is plus 7. My product side, it's a plus 2. So let's add 5 electrons to the reactant side. Now both sides should give me a total charge of plus 2. Okay, excellent. So now we're ready to add these together, right? Almost. Here's one thing people miss a lot. You know, they get everything balanced. They want to add it up and be done. But one of the rules of a redox reaction is that the electron transfer needs to be equal. Now, this is legit because there should always be an electron donor. That's going to be the iron half reaction. And then there should be an electron acceptor. That'll be the manganese half. So that's good. You know you did it right if you've got an acceptor and a donor. But the electron transfer is not equal. So we're going to need five electrons to run that second half. So we have to multiply this first half reaction times five. So let's go through and make this five and five and five. I have to fuel the second half reaction with the first. I need five electrons. All right, so now we can add them together. When you add them up, you can always cancel like terms. One of those like terms should always be the electrons. Five produced, five consumed. You'll always be able to cancel out your electrons. Other things I would look for might be like hydrogen ions or water molecules, which does not apply in this case. So we can just add it all up. It doesn't matter what order you write these components in. So we'll just get after it. The manganese and five iron plus two ions. And I have five iron plus threes the manganese plus two, and the four water molecules. If I was just balancing this on the AP test, maybe it was like a multiple choice or something, I wouldn't necessarily worry too much about the phase symbols. Obviously, all the ions are aqueous. They're all in solution, and the water would be a liquid. Uh, we should double check and make sure everything's balanced. I have eight hydrogen on both sides one manganese, four oxygen, and five iron. And then we got to check our charge. Okay, so we have a total here, plus eight, minus one. That gives me a plus seven. And then this is going to be a total of plus ten. So I have a positive seventeen. Five times three is positive fifteen. 16, 17, what do you know? They work. I don't know why, but I mean, people have like anxiety as soon as they hear the term redox. I think these are a blast. Separate the two halves and then just attack them in order. First to balance the atoms besides hydrogen and oxygen. Then balance the oxygen by adding water. And then finally we do the hydrogen by adding hydrogen ions. Before you can add them together, make sure your electron transfer is equal, which means you might have to multiply one of the halves, or maybe both of the halves. Then cancel like terms, add them up. Double check that the atoms and the charge balance. Piece of cake, right? Some other little vocab terms that we uh, might remember, hopefully you remember. Do you remember oil rig? Oxidation involves losing electrons. The first half is my oil. My oxidation half reaction, oxidation involves losing electrons. Reduction involves gaining. Oil rig. So they might ask, like, what element is oxidized? What element is reduced? Well, I can tell here, like, the two half reactions. Oxidation involves losing electrons. If you're losing electrons, but keeping the same amount of protons, the charge becomes more positive. So that iron is oxidized. We lost one electron, and then we multiplied it by five. 
Reduction involves gaining electrons. If you're gaining electrons, the charge becomes more negative or less positive. In the second half, do you remember like if you had to assign oxidation numbers? Things like hydrogen are always plus one. Fluorine is always minus one. Oxygen is always minus two. There are four oxygen, which would give me a total of minus eight. This whole ion needs to still have a minus one charge, which means that the manganese in the permanganate ion must have been plus seven. So if they ever say assign oxidation numbers, it's kind of like assigning charges. And you just kind of like take into consideration the overall charge on the ion if it's a polyatomic. The manganese was reduced. It started as a plus seven and the charge was reduced to a plus two. Well, that means we must have gained electrons. If you gain electrons, your charge becomes more negative or less positive. So don't forget those guys either. Oil rig. Oxidation involves losing, reduction involves gaining, which is kind of what we have here. Blank is oxidized, blank is reduced. Often they'll say like the element oxidized and the element reduced. And so we'll say that it was the iron oxidized and the manganese was reduced. The electrons were transferred from iron to manganese. It always goes from oxidation to reduction. Oil rig. The electrons are always transferred in that order. Alright, so there's everything you need to know about redox. I'd know like what's oxidized, what's reduced. I'd know how to assign oxidation numbers. I'd know how to balance a redox reaction. Piece of cake. And again, now we kind of mentioned earlier that often these reactions are done in solution. And so the electrons are transferred when these ions collide. And there's a, a direct transfer between the two particles. In electrochem, it's all about redox reactions. We're transferring electrons, but now we're going to separate the two half reactions. And we're going to connect them by a wire. And we're going to force those poor little electrons to travel through a wire in order to go from the oxidation half to the reduction half. Moving electrons will create an electric current. And that's kind of what we'll look at then throughout the rest of this chapter. But if you remember this redox stuff, you are in a very good place.